will Donald Trump survive? Will he still be breathing by the time of the election? I don't think we should be asking the question as to who's going to win the election. That's not the question that we should, we should be asking right now. The question we should ask right now is, will Trump survive the year? That's the real question. The real question right now is, will Donald Trump survive? Will he still be breathing by the time of the election, November 5th? Two assassination attempts building up to this election, it's wild. So, again, like, I'm going to say something that you may agree or disagree with, but I'm going to save it until the end of the, of the video. But I'm still in shock that they've, they've... It was already crazy enough, the first assassination attempt. That was already crazy enough. They tried to get this dude again? <laughs> I mean, bro, like, guys... This it's this election, it's a movie. It's not like a movie, it's not reminiscent of a movie. This election cycle, it's a freaking movie. Bro, this is some Oliver Stone stuff that we're seeing here. Like this political intrigue. Um so here's the, the, the thing. They say don't judge a book by its cover. I am good. I'm judging a book by its cover. If I saw this dude, if I was like Secret Service and I saw this dude in the vicinity. Like this, eyes on him. Eyes on him 24-7. He looks crazy. This guy looks mad. So I think the, the key thing now is to find out why. So they said apparently he was in the area for like 12 hours. So he had been there for a long freaking time. Um, and obviously there's like, he had links to wanting to recruit guys to fight for Ukraine um, because he was against Russia. All this different stuff, all that stuff doesn't matter. The key thing, on, let's see, the other guy, he got killed. The thing with this guy at night now, he's still alive. So you can question him and be like, yo, what is this? What is this about? Which could potentially disprove any conspiracy theories because I just, there is a conspiracy theory I have, but him being alive might disprove that conspiracy theory. But we'll get there. So look, um, but what I wanted to bring up was this. So this is what I was to say. Routh was registered as an unaffiliated voter in North Carolina, but appears to have voted in the most recent Democratic primary in March, according to state records. 1920, he gave a number of small donations, 140 to Act Blue, a Democratic fundraising organization, according to online federal records. An Associate Press photo of a truck outside Routh's Hawaii home displayed a Biden-Harris campaign sticker on the back. In the past, Ralph also bashed candidates such as Tulsi Garbutt, a Democrat who has since left the party, and okay, and also declared his support for former Republican candidates um, Vivek Ramaswamy and Nikki Haley. So people would want to jump into like, oh my gosh, he's a Democrat, he's Axe Blue, this hardcore leftist, they want to now try and kill Trump. Eh, hold your horses there. That is too much. Um, those lines don't connect for me. So here's my conspiracy theory. Again, this is just a conspiracy theory. My conspiracy theory is, so the first assassination attempt, Trump got a boost. And Biden looked such like a bad candidate that guys said, oh, it's, it's done. If Biden was still in this presidency somehow, Trump would wipe the floor with him. With how trash Biden is, how he badly did in the debates, and that assassination attempt that he survived, oh, it would be a done deal. Things have changed. And from that debate, Trump is like, oh, this ain't no Biden. <laughs> this is actually somebody who can actually speak coherently. Someone who is actually attacking me, is actually going in on the offensive. And whatever way you want to slice it, he lost that debate. We don't know whether, how much that affects election, but he lost that de debate, 100%. And I'm here looking at it objectively. I'm, I'm not like, oh, hardcore left, hardcore right. I'm just viewing this as an objective viewer. Because let, let's, let me be here. America, these are both trash candidates. Both of these candidates are trash. Trump, he's entertaining, but he's a clown. He's an entertaining clown, but the guy's a clown. 
He is merely just there for entertainment and box office. This is a real life. Real lives are at stake, are at stake here, and Trump is literally celebrity in chief. He's an entertainer. And he's brought box office entertainment to something very real and serious, which is politics and people's lives. Kamala Harris is a typical political robot. She doesn't have any charisma. She's not engaging. She's not interesting. She doesn't even feel real. You compare her to Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama looks way more real. And you can connect more with Michelle Obama than with Kamala Harris, who just looks as if she is just ticking all of the political boxes. She's a box ticker. So between both of them, they're both trash. They're both trash candidates. They they stink. But Kamala Harris was better on that debate. So a conspiracy theory is, seeing that he lost the debate overwhelmingly with what people were saying, that first assassination attempt did boost my numbers. How about we do a second one? So my theory is you another assassination attempt, that could boost my polls, and that could be a nice rebound of me losing that debate. So that's my conspiracy theory. But the reason why that is potentially dispelled is he's alive, and he'll be questioned. So if, let's say, he was paid and he was involved in trying to assassinate your boy, then he would just say, yo, boom. Um... Lee had the Hoswald. That guy was clipped quick, quickly. Bro, I don't know whether you guys have watched JFK. I recommend you watch JFK, a um, film by Oliver Stone, who wrote and directed it. Crazy film. Crazy film. And when you watch that film, nah, man, that Kennedy thing, that was a huge conspiracy. And they killed Lee Harvey Oswald so quickly, they didn't even have time to question him to see how he may have actually been involved with the FBI, CIA, to try and get Kennedy being killed. Political stuff. So, so, so there, are, there are many angles here. So you could say that Trump, he hired him, but then if he hired him, the main aim is to kill him. Because if he's alive, then he'd be like, yo, Trump, these guys, they paid me, and I was... That's something that he could definitely say. Now, the other angle is, okay, this is someone hired by the dead Democrats. Yes, they feel the threat of Trump, and they feel that Trump is such a threat that he needs to be stopped, and we need to kill him. But you won the debate. And Kamala Harris came out very positive from the debate. See, if you had lost the debate, maybe that would make sense. But if you won the debate, why would you need to hire someone to clip Trump? That doesn't really make any sense. Um, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> it's, going to be, it's, it's just going to be interesting how everything's going to go. But this is what I wanted to say here. In 100 years' time, 150 years' time, Trump will be more remembered than Obama. For better or for worse, for better or for worse, Trump is going to be remembered more because Trump is one of the most impactful and consequential political leaders in recent history. For better or for worse. So this is not about whether you like him or you hate him. It is just what it is. (laughs) Because the MAGA movement, January 6th, how he's affected the world globally. Because remember, like I always say to people, the presence of America is the presence of the world. Forget the UN. The UN, those guys are bombs. They are irrelevant. They're <laughs> people in the UN, those guys are puppets. After that Iraq war, where Bush said, screw you and your United Nations, we're using our veto and we're going in to get this freaking oil from Iraq. Once that happened, I realized that, okay, the UN are bombs. The president of the world, the person who leads the world, is the president of America. Whoever has the biggest empire, scratch that, whoever has the biggest army and the strongest army rules the world. Not some bombers, oh, we are the UN and we are the, the um, international police. Oh, shut up. No, no one, no one cares about you. Whoever has the biggest guns, the biggest weapons, the biggest nukes, most soldiers, most weaponry, they rule the world. Weapons, the, the biggest army rule the world. That's how it works. So, rest of America, they rule the world. And for what Trump did in power and just what he has done within, within the political sphere, 
that has actually gone beyond America. Whatever happens in 100 years' time, they're going to remember him. And my thing is, how does the story end? <laughs> because this could very well have ended with him being assassinated. And who knows what the heck that would have done within America. So my thing right now is that these are not two assassination attempts. Whether you want to believe it or not, these are two assassination attempts. How does this guy's story end? Because from, I believe Kamala Harris is going to win. If she wins, what is the fallout of that winning? Will Trump accept it? Will January 6th, 2.0 happen? If Trump wins, <laughs> if Trump gets a Dubinsky, <laughs> 